Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is October the 12th, 2016. I'm at Fox News at an article titled, Arms Dealer Says Administration Made Him Scapegoat on Libya Operation to Protect Clinton. Just so happens that I did a video on this, and it's titled, What You're Not Supposed to Know About Benghazi. It's not a very good video because it was one of the first ones that I did, but it talks about Operation Zero Footprint in here. So I'd like to finish up the story and tell you what's going on with Operation Zero Footprint now and exactly what Operation Zero Footprint is because obviously there haven't been a lot of people watching this video. So let's get started. We have new evidence tonight about just how far the Obama administration was willing to go to protect Hillary Clinton ahead of her run for president. An arms dealer tells Fox News in an exclusive interview that the full weight of the Justice Department came down on him in an effort to hide a secret plan to funnel weapons to Libya that ultimately armed America's enemies. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge has this exclusive story. All of this happened under Hillary Clinton's watch. It would actually be uh, Secretary Clinton. In his first television interview since criminal charges were dropped against him, licensed arms dealer Mark Turry says the Obama administration, wow. with the cooperation of Hillary Clinton's State Department, tried and failed to make him the fall guy for a 2011 covert weapons program to arm Libyan rebels that spun out of control. I would say 100 percent I was victimized to somehow discredit me, uh, throw me under the bus, you know, do whatever it took to protect their um, you know, next presidential candidate. Five years into the investigation, Turi says the Justice Department dropped the case to avoid public disclosure of the weapons program that was designed to force the ouster of Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi. Those transcripts uh, from current as well as former CIA officers uh, were classified. If any of this, these relationships would have been revealed, um, it would have opened up a can of worms. In 2011, the administration wanted to arm the Libyan rebels, but UN sanctions blocked the direct sale. Working with the U.S. government in Capitol Hill, Turi says he came up with a solution. Turi's plan was to have the U.S. government supply conventional weapons to the Gulf nations Qatar and UAE, who would then in turn supply them to Libya. Turi says he was cut out of the plan, and Clinton's State Department used its own people with weapons flowing to Libya and Syria. That's how they lost control over it. Who got these weapons? Was it Al-Qaeda? Was it Ansar al-Sharia? Was it ISIS in the end? All of them. All of them. All of them. Turi exchanged emails in 2011 with then U.S. envoy to the Libyan opposition Chris Stevens. A day after the exchange about Turi's State Department application to sell weapons, Clinton wrote this email to A. Jake Sullivan. Quote, FYI, the idea of using private security experts to arm the opposition should be considered. Do you believe these email exchanges are a coincidence or connected? When you look at this timeline, None of it was a coincidence. It was all strategically managed, and it had to have come from her own internal circle. Since first telling his story to Fox News, Turi says he's lost everything in his legal fight with the Justice Department. Catherine, it's completely un-American. In Washington, Catherine Herridge, Fox News. Now let's watch another interview and an investigative report by Catherine Herridge on the arming of Benghazi. I'm Catherine Herridge on Capitol Hill. It's been nearly three years since Ambassador Chris Stevens, Foreign Service Officer Sean Smith, and former Navy SEALs Ty Woods and Glenn Doherty were murdered in Benghazi, Libya. And even today, congressional investigators doubt they have all of the emails from Mrs. Clinton's server when she was Secretary of State. In this Fox Files investigation, new details are emerging about what President Obama's team and members of Congress knew about weapons pouring into the region during the chaotic Arab Spring in 2011. Well, this would come under uh, Secretary Clinton's watch. American arms dealer Mark Turi is at the center of a federal investigation involving Libya, Syria and Turkey. Turi is president of the Turi Defense Group, a company that for decades has been licensed and regulated by the State Department to sell and move tons of weapons around the world. He spoke exclusively to Fox News. 
if a certain country is brokering various types of equipment, we try to get involved. Primarily weapons and ammunition, uh, transportation, logistics, government liaison. Curry says he is haunted by what he thinks happened when there was a failure to oversee who got the weapons pouring into Syria, Libya and elsewhere in the Middle East during the Arab Spring. Officially, those who receive or use weapons following U.S. policy are referred to as end users. In 2011, Turi pursued Libya as a business opportunity, as dictator Muammar Gaddafi's regime was falling apart. If you had a properly allocated supply chain where you had everything under control, you would have had our personnel receiving that equipment on the ground in Libya, and then taking it back to a warehouse under our control and then giving it to vetted sources. If they would have followed that procedure, maybe Ambassador Stevens and Sean Smith and Ty Woods or Glenn Doherty would be alive today. Turi shared emails from 2011. The traffic indicates that high-level Democratic, Republican intelligence and military contacts, both inside and outside of government, encouraged him to explore options for arming the Libyan opposition. Yes, I kept getting information from my associates that are liaising with members of Congress and saying, um, there's, there's still interest, keep going. We asked Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano to review some of the email traffic between Turi and members of Congress. Well, unless Mr. Turi concocted these emails, which would be nearly impossible, he has presented sound, documentary, irrefutable evidence to show that this was a covert operation, a grand conspiracy, if you will. One thinks and one wonders when one sees the constellation of political superstars who signed off on this. And you get back to the emails that members of Congress absolutely knew about it. Turi's initial application to sell weapons directly to the Libyan opposition, known as the TNC, was denied. It made perfect and very clear sense because the TNC was not a recognized entity in the world, which means they could never have signed in a news or statement. So the only person or organization or entity I could deal with was the U.S. government. This sworn affidavit released in May 2015 and obtained by Fox News indicates a covert weapons operation was authorized. Turi's partner and advisor was this man, David Manners. During his 18-year career at the CIA, he served as the top spy in Jordan and in the former Czechoslovakia. Manners stated in his expert opinion, the United States did participate directly or indirectly in the supply of weapons to the Libyan Transitional National Council. That's where I came up with this zero footprint Arab Arab uh, uh, supply chain, whereby our foreign ally supplies another Arab country. Turi says it was a workaround because at the time the U.S. had not officially recognized the rebels under the TNC. My idea was to set up a, a warehouse where the only person that could take that equipment out or the only entity that could take that equipment out of Qatar or UAE was the U.S. government. As part of the workaround, the U.S. would supply conventional weapons to another U.S. ally, Qatar. There's 60 millimeter mortar with optics, 120 millimeter mortar, all conventional type weapons. If you want to limit the exposure to the U.S. government, what you simply do is outsource it to your allies. The partners, the Qataris and the Emiratis, did exactly what they were contracted to do. During Hillary Clinton's term as Secretary of State, U.S. arms dealers were awarded a record number of export licenses to sell sophisticated weapons, military parts, and technology internationally. Selena Realu is a professor of national security at the Peary Center at the National Defense University. That's actually been a huge um, policy position of the Obama administration was to actually uh, overall to improve U.S. exports overseas. In 2011, more than 86,000 licenses with a value of $44.3 billion were granted, a surge of more than $10 billion from the previous year. If you would like to engage in arms sales and you're a U.S. manufacturer, you actually actually seek license and apply for an export license with the State Department. Andrew Shapiro served as the um, Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of Political Military Affairs under Secretary Clinton. That role is actually responsible for overseeing this entire um, export control uh, process at the State Department.
March 2011 was a busy time for Hillary Clinton and her team, which included Andrew Shapiro and senior advisor Huma Abedin. On the 14th, along with Chris Stevens, then serving as the embassy's deputy chief of mission in Libya, Clinton met with Mustafa Jibril, a senior member of the TNC. The next day, Clinton met with Egypt's transitional leader, Nabil El Arabi in Cairo, and walked through Tahrir Square with Abedin. At the same time, government documents showed that Turi's proposal, a $267 million contract, was working its way through official channels. My application was submitted on the 12th. These brokers uh, then, through their relationship with the TNC, then provided that application information to uh, Ms. Clinton uh, via the TNC Council when she was in Cairo. That's what was told to me and an email. Turi also showed Fox emails from April 6th and 7th, 2011, that he exchanged with Chris Stevens' personal email account, alerting him to his application to sell weapons. Stevens replied with a thank you, and I'll keep it in mind and share it with my colleagues in Washington. He is the point guy now. Coming up, what does this recently released email from Secretary Clinton tell us about her secret strategy to arm the rebels in Libya? In early April 2011, arms dealer Mark Turi was exchanging emails with Chris Stevens. On April 8, 2011, this heavily redacted email recently released to the Benghazi Committee shows Secretary Clinton was interested in arming the rebels using contractors. FYI, the idea of using private security experts to arm the opposition should be considered, she wrote. The following month, Turi received this preliminary approval letter from the State Department for his $267 million arms proposal for Qatar. In July, his Arizona home was raided by federal agents. They came in with full body armor and, you know, weapons, and um, they take my computers and my cell phones, and they've been chasing me all over the world for the past three years, uh, speaking to associates of mine all over the United States and looking into my records and my past. Now Turi is facing trial set for this September on two counts that he allegedly violated the Arms Export Control Act by making false statements. His attorney Jean-Jacques Cabou told Fox in emails that his client had a track record working for the U.S. government through the Central Intelligence Agency. And the government's case is an epic fishing expedition. And his client neither lied on any application nor did he do anything other than support U.S. foreign policy and interests in the Middle East. In his youth, Turi made some mistakes, and Fox confirmed he served time in an Arizona jail. Nonetheless, since the 1990s, Turi's company met the strict State Department criteria to sell and move weapons around the world in support of U.S. operations. Turi insists he never shipped any weapons to Qatar, and others stole the zero footprint idea. Why isn't the State Department contacting me about making a mistake? on my application. The State Department had a lead on this. They were going to run it with their people. And who that is, I have no idea. I sat back and watched this unravel, and it, it went south really quick. Turi says he heard disturbing reports from his contacts on the ground in Libya about weapons arriving from Qatar and falling into the wrong hands. When this equipment landed in, the, in, in Libya, half went one way and the half went the other way. The half that went the other way is the half that ended up in Syria. This Defense Intelligence Agency report, recently obtained by a Judicial Watch lawsuit, provides further confirmation weapons were flowing unchecked in the weeks leading up to the 2012 attack. Quote, weapons from the former Libya military stockpiles were shipped from the port of Benghazi, Libya, to the port of Banias and the port of Borj Islam, Syria. Fox News has reported extensively about the shipment of weapons, including man pads aboard the Libyan ship Al Antasar to Turkey, five days before the Benghazi assault. This is what then Secretary Clinton told Senator Rand Paul in her only testimony to date. Now my question is, is the U.S. involved with any uh, procuring of weapons, transfer of weapons, buying, selling, anyhow transferring weapons to Turkey out of Libya? To Turkey? I, I, I will have to take that question for the record. That's, I, nobody's ever raised that with me. 
I, it's, I been, don't. it's been in news reports that ships have been leaving from Libya and that they may have weapons. And what I'd like to know is the annex that was close by, were they involved with procuring, buying, selling, obtaining weapons? And were any of these weapons being transferred to other countries, any countries, Turkey included? Well, Senator, you'll have to direct, direct that question to uh, the agency that uh, ran the annex. And I will, I will see what information is available. And uh, You're saying you don't know. I do not know. I don't have any information on that. Two weeks after that testimony, the State Department letter was sent to Senator Paul. It skirted his question, stating the U.S. government is not involved in any transfer of weapons from Libya to Turkey. You know, when this comes out as a result of the work that we're, that we're doing, the fury ought to be amongst the 95% of Congress who were not informed of this, who did not have a say in it, even though the Constitution says only Congress can declare war. Mrs. Clinton effectively ran a secret State Department within the State Department. Fox News is reaching out to current and former government officials whose names appear in the emails. You can read more about our ongoing reporting at foxnews and foxbusiness.com.